Hey guys, today we're going to talk about bonded neutral generators and also floating neutral generators and why that might be important for you. So first you need to know the type of generator that you have. All of these right here, these are all bonded. And then as we come down here, like this Honda down here, these are all floating neutral generators. And there is a way you can easily test that just to make sure in case your faceplate or the panel doesn't say, but almost every one of them will say what it looks like. So right here you can see the Honda says floating neutral. We come over here to this Genmax generator. It says neutral bonded to frame, so that's a bonded generator. This Max Painting Rods generator says system bonded to the frame and system floating. I actually don't really know why it says that because if you check it, it's a bonded unit. And both of these two units are the same. These are bonded units. Now to double check to make sure your system is bonded or not, because this sometimes they're not always correct, but you'll want to put your meter into continuity. That means when you touch the two wires, they should just make a signal, meaning that a, there is a complete circuit. So you'll go over to one of your plugs. You're gonna go over to the neutral side. You can just stick your meter in there like that, little probe. And then if you want, you can put it into the ground slot and then you will get continuity between that, meaning that the neutral is bonded. And you can also go down here to the ground lug and meaning the neutral is bonded. Now, if this was a floating generator, floating neutral, you wouldn't get continuity, so you wouldn't get a beep, meaning that that system is a floating neutral. Now say like this Honda, which has a neutral floating generator or is a neutral floating, same thing with this one, and you actually need to bond it because of the type of transfer switch that you have. That's where it's gonna be important is your generator hookup connection. You can buy bonding plugs. This one I made and I purposely left that tail out there that way I can easily recognize it, but you're basically just bonding the neutral to the ground. That's all it is, it's a jumper wire that's in there. And so that's, you know, something you can buy for about, oh, maybe 12 bucks or make your own. It almost costs the same by the time you buy the plug in the wire uh, to just buy, you know, a bonding plug. It's actually just cheaper and easier. Okay, I'm going to try to keep this as simple as possible, but your home distribution panel look a little bit something like this. And you can use a bonded generator or a floating neutral generator in a setup like this, as long as your generator isn't relatively too new and is GFCI protected all the way across the circuit board. This is when maybe you may need a different type of transfer switch because having a ground fault circuit interrupter is maybe going to cause problems and might start tripping breakers inside your panel. So that is the only time that you may have to get a transfer switch that says like this one here that is listed GFCI protected or, you know, capable, compatible. Because according to NEC guidelines, you're actually not supposed to have more than one bonding point. So your home system is bonded. And then if you have a bonded system generator, well, that's another bonding point. So according to NEC, you're not really supposed to have two. People have done this all the time, but you should check and consult your local electrician to make sure that you have a system that's compatible with the generator that you have. Now this transfer switch is not actually a GFCI, you know, compliant unit, but these are real popular and will work with most applications. Now I've used both generators on, you know, my house and my setup with my generator inlet box, and I've used all these new generators to test, and so far I haven't had any issues. Um, for the most part, if you guys want to install a... Uh, transfer switch that is you know the type that you would have for a GFCI then you would want to obviously again consult an electrician and make sure that you tell them what type of generator you have show them what type of generator you have that way they can buy the appropriate transfer switch to hook that up that's really the main differences between a bonded generator and a neutral floating for the most part when it comes to hooking it up to your home now I have had people ask me how to basically unbond your generator. That may not be something that you want to do because that will put it out of warranty immediately. And taking these apart, you have to get to the inside of the engine quite a bit. On the other side of the case where the generator coil is to undo a screw, it kind of looks like this. You can see that the white jumper wire is going over to the casing where it actually bonds to the engine, which is then bonded to the frame. And that green and yellow wire would have to be um you know left in place but the white jumper wire would then be removed that would unbond the unit and make it a floating generator basically and now you know that's how you would do that so it's not something i recommend doing so you guys really should leave these units alone um you know and get the appropriate transfer switch if you happen to have a problem when you're hooking up your generator 
Anyway, that's a quick run through of a bonded versus a neutral floating generator and I hope that kind of helps distinguish maybe what you might need.